Hi everyone, I'm Morten Ostad here, welcome to my channel and welcome to another video from me which is actually an entry into a competition. JT's Record Room is uh, having a celebration, uh, celebrating 3000 subscribers and uh, congratulations. Uh, the competition is as follows, make a video shout out another channel show three records uh, where the album cover is somehow related to food talk about that a bit and show a highly recommended record well a record that you highly recommend and also of course um, make him aware of the fact that you made said video so records with food First of all, I had to, you know, get rid of all the CDs because I wanted to do this on vinyl. And um, I'm wearing an appropriate t-shirt because the first one I'm going with is... Pearl Jam. With their album, Pearl Jam. Yes, they waited until, uh, what is it, their sixth album until they named uh, an album uh, Pearl Jam. <laughs> um... Some people simply just call it avocado. They came up with the various reasons or one reason why this was the artwork. I can't remember it because, to be honest, I I didn't really think that was <laughs> seemingly very uh, relevant. Uh, but uh, I must say, this is a really good album by Pearl Jam. Hard pressed me, hard pressed to say that any uh, album by Pearl Jam isn't good because I freaking love them uh, so but um, yes the previous album was maybe a bit of a tough listen um, you know, especially I mean uh, I, I would say for example after um, no code yield was a bit of a fresh uh, start again maybe and then things were maybe uh, was it binaural and the next one uh simpler more direct more rocking um only record released on this record label that i keep forgetting the name of J Records or something like that. It was also their last album distributed by Sony. Uh, 2008. So, uh, great album. Uh, Pearl Jam. Avocado, I suppose. And here is the without the back. So the next record I uh, was was what actually what kind of prompted me to do this entry so quickly because I thought oh someone is gonna do this one before me and uh, I didn't want them to so uh, here it is the Rolling Stones beggars banquet or banquet um, yeah there's no food here but it's an invite to a dinner isn't it dinner party RSVP uh, also the reason I showed this one and not uh, the other cover is that I I in my opinion, this is the correct cover for this album. This is how it was released. They may have moaned and griped and been all pissy about that, but um, that's, uh, you know, them, them's the break, them's the fact. Uh, so I, and I, so I, I don't really like the, the other cover. I know a lot of people say, oh, well, that is the proper Rolling Stones Beggar's Banquet album. Well, okay. But this is the reason. I chose this. This is a dinner party of sorts. Mick being fed an apple there. Bill not seeming to have any food in front of him. It's on the other side of the table and that seems to make him s somewhat uh, confused. Um, Charlie's had his fill. Brian uh, apparently is so far gone that he is now act actually able to have conversations with dogs. And uh, yeah, Keith has got his 
pewter. Is it pewter mug? And this guy is really happy they forgot him. I nearly went with um, with Paul McCartney, uh, but then I thought, nah. If if people think he's gonna slaughter that ram, actually no, it wasn't. It was uh, his debut. There's a bowl. There's some berries, cherries, or whatever there, and I thought, uh, nah, I don't know. So anyway, I went with this. This is not my favorite of their albums. Uh, not that they have a lot of them, but it. Uh, it's kind of a dark horse, I suppose. Um, a singer, of course, having died right after the album came out. Record company then terminating all um, promotion, leaving it sort of dead in the tracks. Yeah. So it's, um, it's Blind Melon. Soup. That's actually the the producer uh, eating that soup, alphabet soup, I suppose you would call that. Inner sleeve. Uh, yeah, Andy Wallace is the uh, was the producer on this. Menu. So yeah, Shannon Hoon, of course, he, I think he died two months after this came out. So this is their second and last album featuring him. I think they went on to, there's, um, there's a very nice uh, compilation that came out a little later of uh, sort of leftover stuff. Uh, uh, I don't have that one on vinyl yet. I hope to have it. Because that kind of would bookend my Blind Melon collection. Fourth and final task in this competition. Uh, show a highly recommended uh, album. Recommended as in recommended by you, the maker of this video. And because... Not that it isn't highly recommended, but I think it's it's a great, great album. But first of all, I have um, planned on getting this advanced records on vinyl gradually. I haven't gotten around to it. It's, it's one of my absolute favorite bands from the very tail end of the 80s, but mostly the 90s, I suppose. And also, JT showed a record by that band in his own introduction to this contest and I thought well I do have one album by this band and it's a compilation and what better way to get into a band which is really really good if uh, like uh, Steve said in his video yesterday compilations are, are a great thing so this is the charlatans a head full of ideas um, this is the three um, album version of this compilation, which I think came out in 2022. And uh, I only found out after I got it that there was a four... I think there was a four album version of this. So side A, B, C and D are um, studio uh, tracks. And then you have the third album, which is live. Trust is for believers. And uh, there you are. One of the vinyls there. There they are back in the in the day. I mean and they were pretty big for a while there, especially in the, in the UK. And um, I remember seeing their records all over the place, also here in Scandinavia. And um, I remember I was a little bit annoyed in a way because I I bought their um, I bought their debut album when it came out. That was sort of before 
they became whatever they later became and the music scene in the UK became and I remember saying hearing some people I talked to who were like a little older than me and said yeah now they're they're stone roses clones and I was screw you that's that's not the case I, I don't agree at all and then the second album came out and I think that was a bit of a uh, failure commercially for them and and that was the one that JT showed and I was having none of that I thought that was even better I thought it was amazing and then later on when I got like their third or fourth album they, I, I got them and they were oh yeah you finally get on board sort of got got the feeling that people were saying to me are you finally getting on board over the charlatans and I was like what you're, you're the ones who are getting on board I'm 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 old school here <laughs> yeah so anyway a uh, great idea for a contest JT uh, all the best uh, further on with that and I hope lots and lots of you guys do this um, I was gonna shout out a channel Oh, it's always so difficult, especially when you can't shout out to 25 and you know, can only shout out one. But he seemed rather adamant uh, that we should only do one. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, ben Rankins. I want to see some... Uh, I want to see some uh, Australian records related to food. Um, yeah. Not not roadkill. <laughs> Sorry, uh, yeah, something uh, something related to food in Australia. That that would be really cool if you could find that. Um, so uh, anyway, um, hope this uh, qualifies me. Me, uh, you know, me Scandinavian, uh, not uh, necessarily understanding all the uh, you know the subtleties of the English language. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, uh, please click like and subscribe and head over to JT's and do the same if you haven't already and to Ben of course and everyone else uh, in the vinyl community, the wonderful vinyl community, take care guys, hope to see you soon, bye.